Thank you for choosing Chamberlain. This video will provide an overview of how to install a Chamberlain wall mount garage door opener, model RJO20. This video is intended for demonstration purposes only. Please consult the manual for complete instructions and safety information. The RJO20 garage door opener is well suited to many types of garage, but not all. It is very important to check your garage and make sure you can answer yes to all of the following requirements before purchasing the RJO20. An electric outlet must be accessible within 6 feet of the opener. The outlet must be 120 VAC, 60 Hz only. Contact a qualified electrician if you need an outlet installed. Your door is a sectional garage door that is no larger than 180 square feet no taller than 14 feet, and no wider than 18 feet. Any gap between the bottom of the door and the floor does not exceed a quarter of an inch. Your door has a torsion spring, not an extension spring. The torsion bar is one inch in diameter. The torsion bar extends at least one and a half inches past the bearing plate. The torsion bar is free of damage. The distance between the ceiling and the center of the torsion bar is at least 3 inches. The distance between the garage wall where the torsion bar is mounted and the torsion bar is at least 2 and a half inches. The distance from the end of the torsion bar to the other garage wall or any obstruction is at least 8 and a half inches. Drums are between 3 and 6 inches in diameter. The cable should wind over the top of the drum and be nearest to the wall. If you answered no to any of these questions, do not attempt to install the RJO20. You'll need to contact a trained door systems technician to make any needed corrections. If you answered yes to all, let's get started. In this overview video, we'll demonstrate the following. 1. Preparing your garage door. 2. Assembling and mounting the opener. 3. Installing the automatic garage door lock. 4. Installing the cable tension monitor. 5. Installing the MyQ control panel. 6. Installing the remote light. 7. Installing the protector system. 8. Programming the travel. You can use the progress bar at the bottom of the screen to track where you are in the installation process. The garage door installation and wiring must be in compliance with all local electrical and building codes. Never use an extension cord, two-wire adapter, or change the plug in any way to make it fit an outlet. Be sure the opener is grounded. Completely uninstall and remove the previous garage door opener. Disable any locks and remove any ropes that are connected to the garage door. Check the balance of the garage door. Start with your garage door in the closed position. Lift the door 3 to 4 feet off the ground. Release the door. If balanced, it should stay in place, supported entirely by its springs. Raise and lower the door to check for sticking or binding. If your door binds, sticks, or is out of balance, Contact a trained door systems technician before you install this opener. Be sure to close the door when finished with these checks. Before assembling the wall mount garage door opener, it's a good idea to lay out the parts. They include the garage door opener with mounting bracket, the collar, the cable tension monitor, the internet gateway, the remote light, safety reversing sensors with mounting brackets, the automatic garage door lock, remote control and MyQ control panel, and hardware. You may need additional items such as wood blocks for shimming or hardware for mounting and fastening items. Refer to the installation manual for a list of tools and other items to have handy. Begin by attaching the collar to the opener. The opener can be installed on either side of the garage door. We'll demonstrate assembly and installation for the left side of the garage door so we'll place the collar on the right side of the opener. Use a 3 8 open-end wrench to loosen the set screws on the collar. Locate the side of the collar that has the larger hole and slide the collar all the way onto the motor shaft until it stops. Rotate the collar so that the screws are facing the front of the opener. 
hand tighten the two set screws that are closest to the opener until they make contact with the motor shaft. Then tighten the set screws another quarter to half turn. Locate the mounting bracket with its provided screws. Loosely attach the slotted side of the mounting bracket to the opener on the same side as the collar. The garage door opener must be mounted parallel to the door to avoid premature wear on the collar. Also, when properly mounted, there may be a small space between the garage door opener and the wall. That's not a problem. Slide the opener onto the end of the torsion bar and finger tighten the set screws to temporarily help hold the opener in place. Make sure the collar does not touch the bearing plate. There must be at least one quarter inch of space between the collar and the bearing plate. Use a level to position the opener parallel to the garage door. Mark the mounting bracket holes on the mounting surface. Remove the opener and set it aside. The mounting bracket must be attached to a solid surface such as wood, concrete, or a door flag bracket. If installing on drywall, the mounting bracket must be attached to an underlying stud. Drill 3 16 inch pilot holes at the marked locations. Drill through metal door rail plates if necessary. Slide the opener onto the end of the torsion bar and align the mounting bracket with the pilot holes. Hand tighten the set screws on the collar until they just make contact with the torsion bar. Secure the mounting bracket to the surface using the provided hardware. Double check to make sure the opener is still parallel to the door. If necessary, loosen the set screws and adjust the collar position. Then hand tighten the set screws again. Now, grab the 3 8 open end wrench. For a solid torsion bar, tighten the set screws an additional 1 quarter to 1 half turn. For a hollow torsion bar, tighten the set screws an additional 3 quarters to a full turn. Using a 5 16 socket wrench, secure the mounting bracket to the opener. The emergency release rope is supplied with a red handle. Thread the emergency release rope through the emergency release cable and pull until the red handle is at least six feet above the floor. Secure the rope using an overhand knot and cut off any excess. Do not plug in the opener yet. The automatic garage door lock is used to prevent the garage door from being manually opened once it is fully closed. Mount the lock on the same side as the opener and within 10 feet of the opener. The provided label has a template for drilling the holes you'll need. This can be placed on the outside of the track or the inside of the track depending on which is easier for you to reach with your drill. To determine where to place the label, locate the third roller from the floor. Make sure the bracket that holds the door track to the wall is not in the way. If it is, use the next highest roller. Locate the horizontal center of the roller and mark the location on the door track. From this mark, measure up three and a quarter inches and make a second mark. To disengage the garage door, pull the emergency release handle on the opener until you hear a click. Manually open the garage door. Choose the side of the track that is easiest to access with a drill. This is where you'll attach the drilling template label. If you're attaching to the inside of the track, wipe the area clean to make sure it is free of grease. Mark the inside of the track at the same height as the second mark. Peel the backing off the label. Align the top of the label with the second mark and center it, then attach it to the track. Make sure the label is centered. Pre-drill a small hole on the template using a 1 8 inch drill bit. This will prevent the larger drill bits from moving during drilling. Drill all three holes using a 5 16 inch drill bit. Drill the center hole using a 3 quarter inch drill bit. 
we recommend using a step drill bit that includes both 5 16 and 3 quarter inch size gradations. You'll need to pay attention to the template to ensure that you stop drilling when the step drill bit reaches the correct size. When you're done drilling the holes, be sure to file down any sharp edges. Using a number one Phillips head screwdriver and the provided screws, mount the automatic lock to the outside of the track, making sure the bolt is positioned to go through the center hole. Do not use power tools. Do not over tighten the screws. Use the manual release to check that the dead bolt has clearance to fit through the center hole. If the bolt is interfering with the track, remove the lock from the track and widen the center hole. Slide the manual release on the lock to the open position. Manually close the garage door. Run the wire from the lock to the garage door opener. We recommend securing the wire in place with insulated staples or some other restraint that protects the wire from damage. Lift the cover of the opener and route the wire up through the bottom to where the lock terminal is located. Plug the wire from the lock into this terminal. The cable tension monitor features a roller that rests on the outside of the garage door cable. When the door is closing, if the cable tension monitor detects slack in the cable, it stops the door from closing and reverses it to the fully open position. This helps eliminate service calls for unspooled cable wire. Inside is a switch that is activated when slack in the cable allows the roller to depress. Activating this switch causes the door to reverse. The cable tension monitor must be properly installed before the garage door opener will move in the down direction. We recommend installing the cable tension monitor on the same side of the garage door as the garage door opener. The monitor comes configured for left side installation. For right side installation, remove the snap ring holding the roller in place. Move the roller to the opposite side and reattach the snap ring. Measure the distance between the cable and the surface where you will be mounting the cable tension monitor. In order to function properly, the door cable needs to be approximately three quarters of an inch from the mounting surface for the cable tension monitor. If the cable depth is too large, the cable tension monitor may not react quickly enough to prevent thrown cables. If the cable depth is too small, the cable tension monitor may cause nuisance reversals. A shim, such as a wooden block, may be needed to properly position the cable tension monitor at the proper depth. In this installation, we measured two and three quarters inches from the cable to the mounting surface. In order to achieve the proper cable depth, we'll need to add a piece of two by six. When mounting the monitor, be sure to position the roller between two and six inches below the bottom of the drum. Position the cable tension monitor where it will not come in contact with any moving parts of the door. Be sure to mount over a wood support or use wall anchors when mounting to drywall. Make sure no obstructions will prevent the roller from closing completely. Position the cable tension monitor and mark the mounting hole locations. Drill pilot holes using a 3 16 inch drill bit. Attach the cable tension monitor using the provided hardware. Position the roller on top of the cable. Route the wire to the opener, making sure to avoid all moving parts of the door, including the drum. Secure the wire using insulated staples. Open the cover of the opener and route the wire up through the bottom to the green Quick Connect terminals. We recommend cutting off any excess wire. Use a small screwdriver to push in the tabs and insert the wires from the cable tension monitor. Polarity is not important. Next, install the control panel. The control panel must be mounted within sight of the door at a minimum height of five feet above floors, landings, steps, or any other adjacent walking surface so small children are not able to reach it, and away from all moving parts of the garage door. Check to ensure power is not connected to the garage door opener before wiring the control panel.
The connectors on the back of the control panel are labeled red and white. We've supplied red and white wire to connect the control panel to the motor unit. In our installation, wires are already routed through the walls, so we'll use those instead. If your installation is pre-wired, be sure to make a note of which wire you connected to the red terminal and which wire you connect to the white terminal. You will need to match these wire colors at the connectors on the motor unit. Secure the provided screw in the bottom hole of the junction box. Slide the control panel into place so the screw locks into the keyhole on the back. Lift the push bar and secure the second screw through the top hole on the control panel. If your installation is not pre-wired, connect the provided red wire to the red terminal and the white wire to the white terminal. To mount the control panel, mark the hole location for the bottom screw, then drill a pilot hole. If you're mounting over drywall, be sure to insert wall anchors. Secure the screw in place, then slide the control panel into place so the screw locks into the keyhole on the back. Lift the push bar and mark the location of the top hole. Remove the control panel and drill the second pilot hole. Insert the wall anchor if needed. Slide the control panel onto the bottom screw, then secure the top screw in place. Route the provided red and white bell wire from the control panel location to the motor unit and secure the wire in place using insulated staples. After you've connected the wires, open the cover of the opener and locate the quick connect terminals. Feed the control panel wires up through the bottom and route them to the red and white quick connect terminals. Wire the MyQ control panel to the opener by inserting the white wire in the white terminal and the red wire in the red terminal. If your pre-existing wire colors were different, match the wire colors to the colors you used on the back of the control panel. Do not plug in the garage opener or use the control panel to run the opener at this time. Next, install the remote light. The remote light must be installed and functional to use the timer to close or MyQ smartphone control of the door. These features are for use with sectional doors only. The remote light has a light lens that opens on the front and a power cord that wraps around a retainer on the back. It is intended for mounting to the ceiling using the provided screws. It has been programmed at the factory to operate with the garage door opener. To assemble the remote light, insert the metal clips into the slots on the sides of the light and secure them into place with the provided screws. Choose a mounting location within six feet of an electrical outlet where the cord and light are away from moving parts. Hold the base against the ceiling. Mark the mounting hole locations. Drill the holes and use the provided anchors. Use the provided drywall anchors if mounting to light drywall. Secure the screws into the surface, but don't screw them all the way in. Line up the remote light keyholes with the screws. Twist the base slightly to lock the base onto the screws. Snap the light lens onto the curved part of the lens clip. Screw in your light bulbs and close the light lens. The protector system consists of safety reversing sensors which are mounted on each side of the garage door at floor level. Safety reversing sensors are to be installed no more than 6 inches from the floor. Snap the sensor bracket onto the door track. If the bracket does not fit your style of door track, check the installation manual to learn how to mount the bracket to the wall or to the floor. Slide the carriage bolt head into the slot on each sensor. Then use the wing nuts to attach the sensors to the brackets. 
the lenses on the sensors must be facing each other. If your garage is not pre-wired for safety reversing sensors, follow the instructions in the manual for running the wires from the sensors to the opener. Since this garage is pre-wired, we'll splice the wires from the safety reversing sensors to the existing wiring. For pre-wired installations, be sure to note the wire colors you're splicing to. Open the cover of the opener and locate the white and gray terminals. Route the safety reversing sensor wires into the opener up through the bottom. Twist the white wires together, then twist the white-black wires together. Use a small screwdriver to push in the tabs on the terminals. Insert the white wires in the white terminal and the white-black wires in the gray terminal. Plug the garage door opener into the electrical outlet, but do not run the opener. You will notice lights flashing on the control panel. You'll know it's ready to use when you see the solid amber LED under the push bar. This can take up to five minutes. Now, check the safety reversing sensors. The receiving sensor's green LED should be on solid. The sending sensor amber LED should be on solid. If the sending sensor amber LED is off, make sure of the following. The garage door opener has power. The wire from the sensor is not broken or shorted. The wires are wired to the correct terminals on the opener. If the receiving sensor green LED is flickering or off, loosen the wing nut and adjust the sensor position until the LED glows solid. Programming travel limits tells the opener where to stop when moving the door up or down. Before adjusting the travel, re-engage the garage door by pulling down on the emergency release handle until you hear a click. The door will re-engage once it begins to move. There are two buttons on the opener used to program the travel. The black button moves the door up. The yellow button moves the door down. You'll also need to use the remote control or MyQ control panel during the process. First. Press and hold the black button until the LED begins to flash. Press and hold the black button until the door is in the desired up or open position. To prevent damage, be sure to open the door high enough for your vehicle. Once the door is in the correct open position, press the big button on the remote control, or you may press the bar on the MyQ control panel. The door will begin to close. Immediately press and release either the black button or the yellow button to stop the door. Press and hold the yellow button until the door is in the desired down or closed position. If you need to adjust the closed position of the door, use the black and yellow buttons to move the door up and down. Press the big button on the remote control, or you may press the bar on the MyQ control panel. The door will open. Next, the opener needs to set the amount of force needed to open and close the door. Press and release the yellow button twice to enter force adjustment mode. The LED will flash quickly. Push the remote control or MyQ control panel. The door will close. Push the remote control or MyQ control panel. The door will open. Push the remote control or MyQ control panel a third time to close the door. Force programming is complete. Anytime you make any adjustments, the safety reversal system must be tested. Complete the installation by testing the protector system and performing the safety reversing test. Consult the manual or watch our instructional videos for more information on how to perform these tests. Your installation is complete. For more information, visit us on the web at chamberlain.com.